Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. This is going to be one of those chatty ones. I'll try and keep it reasonably short. I'll try and keep 10 minutes if I can. You know what I'm like once I get going, but I just want to give you an update really on the warm stroke cool side, cool to intermediate side and what's been happening and how I'm thinking about it. Because as we mentioned on another video, solving one problem just kind of runs into another problem. So <clears throat> I'll just show you what's happening. So over here we have the partition. So I'm standing in the cooler side, which I'm now thinking is going to have to be minimum 12 really, because a lot of these orchids, I know that there's a, there's a few, I mean the Streptocarpus don't mind, Pelagoniums don't mind, even the Dendrobium berry order of I've, I've read can go down to 5, but a lot of the other orchids really don't want to go down below 12. But having said that, they also want to go to about 12, otherwise it doesn't induce the, the, the blooming. So it's not, it's not that simple, is it really? If you're new to my channel, click the subscribe button, ding the notification bell, and you won't miss any updates. So anyway, I've been going around, checking things and looking them up and just trying to see really what the temperature range is. And then I've been writing it on the label. And any that I can see really prefer to be a minimum of 18. I've been trying to move them over to the warmer side, or what will be the warmer side. And anything over in the warmer side that doesn't mind going down to 12, possibly below, I've been moving it over to the cooler side. It's going to be a little bit of trial and error with it, I think. Hopefully, I'll be able to spot things before they completely die and I've not I've not gone through and done everything yet I've not checked everything yet I've moved this Miltoni Miltoni Opsis over here because it's still not happy and it's looking very crinkly and I uh, I did Roger's trick with the uh, soldering iron <laughs> again it's not uh, it, it's really good actually the soldering iron is brilliant for doing it really quickly but uh, I know there is an issue of toxic fumes as well, but you know, what can I say? You can't, uh, <laughs> you can't, you can't do everything, can you? Just perfectly. It's just it was quick and it saved me a job. So we'll see anyway. See how that goes. It's, it's in. I've moved it because it's in the direction of the fan, and I wanted to see if I can get it to dry out because it's just not drying out. Uh, anyway, I digress as I normally do. So yeah, there's the partition and as you can see I've now completely bubble wrapped it and I've put some mesh up it on that side on that side and on that side as well over here and I've also noticed that when the bubble wrap door is down and the fan is blowing it's kind of blowing it outwards which means I'm going to get some bleed through of the of the heat heated air from the warm side so I've bought some velcro and put some velcro down there but then, of course, because it's on top of the bubble wrap, it's pulling the bubble wrap up. <laughs> uh, I could really do with a better door system. Um, oh, yeah, I'll just show you something else that I've managed to do, which is a really... I'm really pleased with, actually. You can see I've got the... Uh, I've got the mesh there as well. But I've now got this upright. Now, this upright here, you can see, was attached down there to the bench but it was kind of wobbling at the top because it wasn't attached to anything. It was okay, but you can see now I've managed to get some more angle brackets and get it attached to the to the ceiling, to the roof as well. And the same over there. So now this thing, I can just demonstrate, it's solid as a rock. So I think if the greenhouse fell, fell down, I think this structure would still be up. So it's actually so solid now, I might be able to come up with a, a better solution for the doors. What I really want is something that obviously is going to be uh, have good insulating properties, but something that's easy to get in and out of. Really, you know, the door that I've got over at the far side there is, is ideal, but they're just that expensive. I think that one's about £80, and that one just isn't wide enough. 
I'd need a really wide one, so it would cost me it would cost me well over a hundred to get one for here. So it's back to a DIY method. I might have to see if I can uh, construct something, but that's for another day. I'm not thinking about that at the moment. So yeah, that's what I've been doing, and I've been going around with these things. I mean, these ferns over here are tropical. Um, the flabodiums, the three flabodiums, you might have seen the flabodium video, they grow in subtropical areas anyway. Uh, this one here, I've not really looked that up for a while, but I know it's a house plant, so it can be used as a house plant in bathrooms. So I know that does probably prefer the warmer temperatures. Uh, everything else I've got in here. The, the Nepenthes don't really want to go below 12. They would be probably all right over in the cool side. We'll see how they cope with uh, being at 18 degrees for a bit. Uh, the heaters, so that heater down there, my plan was I was going to have two heaters, one for each side, that one to keep it at 12, and I've turned that down to one kilowatt. But this one over here, the really expensive uh, Bio Green Palmer heater, when I came to look at it, the controls, there is actually no control to, 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 to like decide how many kilowatts you're going to have. So you cannot turn it down to one kilowatt. All you can do is have it on full or the fan or off. There is this thermostat here, but I guess it's just on two kilowatts all the time. I'm going to have to look it up, look up the manual, but I don't think, you know, and that costs probably about 100, and that one over there cost about 40. But that's the one that I, that's uh, more controllable in terms of output. I can't have more than two kilowatts. Can't have them both on full blast because <clears throat> I've tried it before on the greenhouse circuit, which is kind of taken from the garage, uh, which is taken from somewhere else, <laughs> not next door. Um, it it won't cope with more than than two kilowatts. It just trips the switches. So that's my problem. I think it'll probably be a while before I switch these over yet. Well, I say a while, it could be a few days. <laughs> I've not really decided on how I'm going to do this yet, whether I can just by turning the thermostat down on the the expensive heater over there, whether that will work, you know, on the, the whole electric, electrical output circuit, whether it'll work or not, I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to have a go, but at the moment the temperatures are quite mild, well very mild considering it's about 13, 14 degrees outside which is really unusual for <coughs> late January, February tomorrow, you'll probably be getting this in a, about a week's time. Yeah, any suggestions for doors, anybody can come up with something that'll be easy to get in and out of without having to roll the whole thing up, that would be useful. If anybody spots any of these plants and thinks, yeah that's definitely in the wrong end, it should be in the warmer end. By all means, stick that in the uh, comments as well. Again, the Nepenthes up there probably could cope with both sides, but I'll try them in the cooler area. Oh, that, the other thing I was going to mention, uh, which is really annoying, the Mars Hydro Light. Well, <laughs> somebody did mention this actually. Have I thought of this? Well, no, I hadn't, but I only have over this side uh, a general LED light. It's not a grow light. So if I want the plants over this side to get the benefit of a grow light, which I really do, seeing as these are probably going to be the more expensive, warmer growing ones, then I'm going to have to buy another Mars Hydro grow light. Unless they're listening and they want me to test one, you know. To all my millions of subscribers, that's, maybe that's for the future, if I get that far. I'll be, you know, I'll be honest, I'll be happy with a thousand, that would be useful. At least uh, I might get a little bit back from it. But uh, it's great to speak to people um, in the comments and, and learn as I'm going and share people my ups and downs of greenhouse growing. So I've brought my new bifoliate, massively long named Lelio Catlia over here. It's looking great. Uh, Margaret East noticed that this new replacement Lelia Ansept had uh, a ton of scale on it. <laughs> I must confess I didn't notice. I'm normally pretty good at noticing things like that but uh, as my eyes are getting a bit more <coughs> short-sighted 
I've got contact lenses in, but you, you the, and they are actually bifocal. Believe it or not, they are actual bifocal contact lenses, but they're not. They're not as good as bifo bifocal glasses, and uh, really close up things like like uh, scale, difficult to spot. But when I when I play back the video, I can spot them straight away. Uh, so I'll give that a good spray with a, a systemic a systemic spray. So hopefully an insecticide. Hopefully that'll do the trick. I'll keep my eye out on that. So yeah, well I've just gone over ten minutes, so I think I've talked about everything I wanted to talk about. Would you believe it? The sun's coming out now. I was due out gardening today. I did a little bit, bit of a winter tidy up for somebody, and uh, even though it's not rained all week, as soon as I go out, it's poured it down ever since. Well, now the sun's coming out, so I'm all dressed up. We know where to go. So I came in and finished off the uh, finished off the mesh over here. So all I need now is a ton of mounts to hang on it. So if anybody wants to send me any spur mounts they've got, I'll be happy to give them a home. <laughs> okay, that's it for now. So uh, by all means, give it a thumbs up. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.